This is your friendly ex-Muslim. So this video clip of hijab lecturing Joe Rogan caught my eye. It's a video called, Has Joe Rogan Changed His Mind on Islam? In it, he starts by saying it's encouraging that Joe Rogan seems to have changed his tone on Islam. But then he brings up a Malcolm X quote about how being stabbed in the back and pulling the knife out halfway isn't something to be thankful for. Then he goes even further, criticizes him, calls him a caricature of materialism, and then lectures Joe about the purpose of life. Let's see what he said. You know, when you watch the Muslims uh, gather around Mecca yeah, and go around the that Hajj, circle, yeah. you don't think there's something kind of beautiful about that, yeah. amazing about that they all peacefully get there they all dress the same and they all like move around this thing and show respect obviously it's doing something for them it has this profound yeah. effect on them joe rogan i want to be honest with you because i know you're watching this video i know for a fact you're watching this video in fact yeah i want to be honest with you and tell you that this language that you're using um it's doing something for them it's revelatory of your own bias and I think your bias may be something which is referred to in ethics as egoism, or even in psychology as egoism. This idea that things should be done for us, like we are the center of attention, that we should be acting on our self-interest, and really that is the basis for morality. All this talk about egoism, Joe Rogan didn't even say anything about morality or that feeding our best interests is a basis of it. Hijab is trying too hard to sound smart and use big words. All he said is, it does something for them. The Hajj does something for Muslims, meaning it gives them something. If you took this one sentence and converted that to egoism, you are sadly just projecting what you want him to mean not what he actually means. Joe is simply describing Muslims like any anthropologist would do. He is reflecting that there appears to be what looks like passion and pleasure and purpose and enjoyment in the Hajj rituals. This makes sense to me. It's a sort of spiritual Disneyland. You go to the Hajj feeling like you're in this blessed, sacred spot. Even people say when you see the Kaaba, you will cry tears of joy. For me, I was kind of like, uh, it's a bit smaller than I thought. No tears. A bit disappointed in myself, really. I was expecting some tears. Nope. Either way, point is that these rituals do give a sense of purpose. I mean, heck, even suicide bombers have a sense of purpose when they blow themselves up. That doesn't make it a good thing, necessarily. But Joe Logan is being generous here and saying it does something for Muslims. He's right, and he's not being egotistic either. Hijab should know this. Deep down inside, religion does something for people, or they wouldn't follow it. Look how many videos you have of people who converted to Islam for emotional reasons, because they had a tragic accident, or nearly lost their life, or were otherwise facing difficulty in their lives. It gives them some sense of satisfaction. For many people, it's a way to be reunited with their loved ones in the hereafter, a way of making sense out of the injustice in the world, a way to feel that everything has some sort of meaning even if it doesn't seem to be. A way to explain away all the pain and suffering and cruelty and sickness and death and all of that stuff that we see in this world. Many people also are naive and don't realize that converting to Islam also comes with expectations. These converts are told that they have to quit their haram job, cover their tattoos if they have them, wear hijab if they're female, and behave a certain way. Converting to Islam or even being Muslim in general is not free so to speak. So to repeat what Joe said, there are benefits for them, but there are also costs. Not only that, but the purpose of life, therefore, is for us to try and get as much of it as we can. Let it do something for us, like a slave. Life is a slave to us. And we're just here telling life what to do. This comes quite frequently in your podcast, if I may be honest with you and tell you. Whether it's you telling people or asking them about LSDs, telling them about your experiences, smoking a big cigar and doing this and that, so, or, you know, HGH that you take and the Palumboism that you have or the change, facial change that you've seen because of the steroid abuse and so on. This is just, you are a caricature, and I don't mean this to be rude, you are a caricature of materialism. 
you basically are emblematic. Oh, not so much to see here. Just him making digs at Joe for smoking cigars or taking stills or whatever. This is not the purpose of life. We want to say that the purpose of life is not so that we may consume things and it can do things for us before we hit the grave. The purpose of life is to worship our creator. That's the purpose of life, that we have a creator. He created the human beings, which we, we can reason rationally. The purpose of life is to worship that creator. That's the purpose of life, to submit ourselves to that creator. Rousseau very famously said, man is born free, but everywhere in chains. The Quran states that Allah has put forward a parable of two men. One of them has many slave masters, and the other one has only one slave master. Are they the same? Praise be to God that most people don't understand. So first of all, I want to call out this example from the Quran of a man who has many slave masters. You see, the examples the Quran uses are highly even relevant to today's world. Slavery is something done now. Allah pointed out something that's relevant to those people 1400 years ago and maybe for a few hundred years more and now leaves us saying example of a slave? Huh? This ain't no divine revelation. It's the words of a man who didn't know better and used examples from his own life. I mean, Muhammad was a slave owner himself. He even slept with his female slaves. Definitely not what I would call a good example, but nevertheless, the mathal, the example, is what it is. Irrelevant and outdated, like the rest of the Quran. Meaning, meaning, you will always be a slave to something or someone, whether it's your own desires or societal expectations or materialism, or a combination of all those things. Or you can decide to be the slave or submission in submission to the one who created you. The problem is, it's not worship and submission to the one who created you. It's a worship and submission of Muhammad's conception of God and his teachings and commandments. The Quranic idea of God is manufactured as a synthesis of the Judeo-Christian God with pagan flavor added to it. It's not the creator of the universe. It's Muhammad's man-made idol. It's an angry monster who wants total submission and obedience. Or else, it's an angry monster that wants dominance over the whole world. To subjugate the world, as the Quran puts it, to dominate over all other ways of life despite the disbelievers hating it. This antagonistic God who hates for non-Muslims and Muslims to be allied, who supposedly commanded all of the non-Muslims to be kicked out of the Arabian Peninsula at the death of Muhammad, who ordered the execution of those like the Jews of Ben Qurayza who did not submit to Muhammad's wishes, this is no creator of the universe. He is a destructive, hateful deity if he really exists. And the Quranic message is very straightforward, Joe Rogan. It's that you have to make the right decision. The purpose of life is to worship God, not to worship yourself, not to worship societal expectations. And you will not receive happiness, tranquility, and purpose in life. You'll be stuck in the second gear of a meaningless lifestyle if you think that you can fill the void of purpose with all of the activities that you are partaking in. They have no uh, ability, in fact, or facility to fill that void is impossible. The only way to fill that void is through God, the Creator, the Creator God, which is sustaining the universe and maintaining us. I really want to laugh right now. Why is hijab so confident that Joe has a void in his life that needs filling? This is again projection. Muslims want to make people think that Allah is the only way to be content. But I know, and even I know this as a Muslim, that many people, some of which are the most religious of all, are unhappy, uncontent, and miserable with their lives. And the worst thing is that some Muslim psychiatrists will tell these Muslims that the solution is to be more religious, to do more adhkar, to do more prayers. But that doesn't work. That's not going to fix the problem. I once read a book called Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. I'm pretty sure I read it as a Muslim. It's a story of a Holocaust survivor who was a psychiatrist captured by the Nazis. He wrote this book on how even in the worst, most 
horrible place you can imagine, a concentration camp, people still manage to find some meaning and contentment in their lives. You see, it's never been about religion or lack of religion or God or no God. It's something else. I'm not going to go into it here, but the point is Islam doesn't solve the problem. So it's not for us to be expecting from God or what can religion do for us. It's the wrong question. The right question is, what's the purpose of life? And what can we do to meet that purpose? We say the purpose of life is to worship God. It's so really as straightforward and simple as that. Submit our will to God. And the world is like a shadow, Joe Rogan. The world is like a shadow. All the happiness they're in is like a shadow. The more you try and walk towards it, the more it moves away from you. And that's what you'll find. I'm sure you have already found that, Joe Rogan. And what you will continue to find. The pursuit of happiness, therefore, which is a phrase that's entrenched in the American documents, is nothing but a mirage, is nothing but a delusion. And the true way out of nihilism and a completely purposeless lifestyle is a strong purpose, which can only be granted through the Creator God. We're happy to have these conversations, Joe Rogan. And we need to have these conversations. You need to think deeply about what I've said. Because you don't have much time, to be, to be honest with you, on this planet. How long? Are, how old are you? I mean, with all due respect, you're pushing 60 now, are you? You know, how old are you? How old are Joe Rogan? And it's not even about age, because people die in their, uh, when they're young. But you're pushing 60 now, Joe Rogan. 10, 20 more years, you, you know, it's over, really. You can't even... <laughs> You know, if you take HDH from the horse himself, he's not going to be putting you back into the age of youth. Well, first of all, Joe is 53, not pushing 60 like you're saying. And Wu says he only has 10 to 20 years more. <laughs> he might live to 120. That's another 60 years. So it's, you need to start thinking about the purpose of life and think about the grave, as Heidegger said, as his farewell advice. That if you want authenticity in life, think about the grave. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And Heidegger apparently felt that people being afraid of death made their lives less meaningful. He felt that to embrace death, which he called nothingness, das nits, was a key to be more authentic. To embrace this fragility, to visit the graveyards is to find more joy. To an atheist, life is infinitely more valuable and precious because it's not followed up by an eternity in the next life. If this is what he meant, I would agree with him. I would say yes. Stop trying to twist philosophers' words to promote Islam. This fear-mongering about punishment in the grave, about heaven and hell and Allah's wrath, that's just stupidity. Islam is very immature in its teachings. It uses a big stick of threats over and over again to convince people to be good. But it's not good for humanity for the world, for anyone. And my friends, that's all I have for today. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to support the channel, check out my Patreon. These lovely people listed here are the ones currently funding my work. You can be one of them too. This is Abdullah Samir signing out. <laughs>